Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call to order this Monday, March 15th, 2021, regular meeting of the County Winchester Board of Education to order. Mr. Roberts, if you would please. Mr. Butler. Here. Mr. Kruger. Present. Mr. Batchelor. Here. Mrs. Talley. Here. Mr. Unani. Here. If you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You couldn't do that again. Thank you. Um, Ms. Sattler, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Yes, we have one addition. It's under action item. Uh, Section G, action items number three, general temperature control, HVAC removal, and reinstall proposal for the high school. That was added this morning. And that's necessary because I think that's coming up March 22nd. 22nd. So something that's important. Thank you. And that's it. Okay. So I need a motion to approve the agenda, please. So move. Mr. Was that Mr. Uh, Second. Ms. Krieger. John, second. Thank you. Mr. Roberts, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Matchler. Yes. Mr. Butler. Yes. Mrs. Talley. Yes. Mr. Unani. Yes. Okay. We are moving into the section B for presentations. Can I reach us from middle school, if you would, please? Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Zifchuk, the principal at Canal Winchester Middle School. And tonight I would like to tell you a little bit about our eighth grade science department's cr layered curriculum. And my teachers, Pat Mariscal, Sean Santangelo, and Beth Renier were not able to be here tonight. So I'm going to read um, a little bit of information to describe the layered curriculum. And I have a little video to show you as well. During the 1920 school year, the eighth grade science department decided to adjust the way we conduct our science classes. Given our diverse student population at Canal Winchester Middle School, our goal was to create a more student focused approach in the classroom through providing a variety of learning options to each student based on their ability and motivation to learn. Students continued to use their current textbook and kept an interactive notebook in class for notes, labs and additional activities. The development of our layer curriculum allowed for all students to work at their own pace, choose their own assignments to demonstrate mastery of a concept, utilize technology in new and engaging ways, and provided opportunities to collaborate and communicate with teachers and peers. The expectation was a student would work through leveled assignments to accomplish a minimum C layer, the level of a C on the middle school grading scale. Layered curriculum assignments allow for students to progress more slowly through, through the curriculum to, to achieve at least a C level, while students seeking more a, of a challenge or a better grade would need to de demonstrate additional evidence of learning to reach the B or A level. Students were not permitted to stop working on assignments until the end of the unit due date at each layer and was designed to be more complex than the last as a student moved from C to B to A. Additionally, layer curriculum assignments would be adjusted to accommodate students with IEPs 504s, and EL, ELL students. Layered curriculum was graded using rubrics designed for each student, and rubrics were available to all students through classroom or canvas and physically posted in each of the classrooms. Each unit of study was equal to 100 points to make all eighth grade science students equally accountable for progress. All students completed the end of unit test. Due to COVID this school year, the students' inability to gather and move freely around the classroom we pulled assignments from later curriculum into a student choice board. The choice board still provides for a voice and choice, demonstrating mastery, new technology experiences, and collaboration and communication, while being manageable for both students and teachers. We are hopeful that next year we can continue with later curriculum, offering more student options and choice to engage and motivate all students in the learning progress. Please enjoy the video of our choice boards.
my name is Alfred Hello, my name is Alfred Wegener, and you guys didn't believe me on my continental drift theory, but I have evidence to support it right now. So, continental drift is real because once we had this, since we had this huge, big island, there was different there was different kinds of fossils and rocks around, like. Would you mind if I ask you some questions about your life and scientific Thank evolution? You Thank you for having me, and I would love that. I always try to get any chance I can to explain my advancements in life to others. Ask on. Who are you exactly? I am James Hutton. I am a geologist, agriculturalist, chemical manufacturer, naturalist, and physician. Where are you from? So I rub it on my hair to create friction and then I do this and it separates the foil. Hi, my name is Jalen Scott and this is my representation of the layers of the earth. Thank you. Any questions? Check. Some of that was quite unique thinking on their part. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, a few years ago, they just came to me and said, we, we're not getting the student output that we want in eighth grade science. So this is all them. They worked together, and this is what they came up with, the layer curriculum. Do you find that remote learning has made this a more positive or less positive dynamic? That's a great question. Um, I would say it's a different dynamic. I think they've adapted and they're flexible and took what they did last year for the layer curriculum, which I think Mr. Sotler and Ms. Hunt have seen when they've, we've done walkthroughs and adapted it to make it what it is this year. Well, I teach middle school science from time to time yeah. too with uh, my special ed kids and it's kind of the, I might borrow some of this. Go for it. 
And you said, Ms. Zizek, you, you've been able to do this across the board with your science. Like, because I, I was really liking it, and I'd like the whole idea of differentiating. So mm -hmm. you've been able to hit, like, so even some of your kids on IEPs and yep. in those different classrooms and maybe aren't in, you know, different placements, you've been able to incorporate this across the science curriculum. Yeah, that was one of our biggest challenges in science. So that's why I think they went back to the drawing board because we weren't meeting all of our students' needs. So then last year, unfortunately, we didn't get through a full year with the layer curriculum mm -hmm. and they had to adapt it and for this year, but hopefully next year we'll get to try it within a full year. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it really looks awesome, and I know it seems like the kids are really growing and getting a lot out of it. Even throughout the changes you had to make this year, it seems like the kids are really enjoying it and definitely mm -hmm. thriving and growing and learning a lot yeah. during Absolutely. the year. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, the next presentation would be from CWEA, please. Hi, I'm Kaylin Lombard, and I'll be speaking about the elementary schools on behalf of CWEA. At Indian Trail, they just celebrated Read Across America Week, which the kids always enjoy. It involves dress-up days and reading all of their favorite books. They look forward to it every year. At Winchester Trail, Mrs. Riddle's third grade class just did a mini unit on kindness where they wrote to a Canal Winchester graduate who was just deployed in the Air Force. The students were very thoughtful in their letters. They sent him words of encouragement and gratitude for his service. And they are hopeful that these letters will both put a smile on his face and that he will write back to them. It sparked a really great conversation with her students about the importance of serving your country and about being thankful for those who do. I'm a little taller than that. Bonsoir, I'm breaking stuff, I'll just hold it. <laughs> Julie Aldridge, high school building rep and high school French teacher. I'm gonna speak on behalf of the middle school and the high school. In the seventh grade, the social studies students are creating African Empire travel posters in Lucid Press. Students are going to be designing and creating posters to drive tourism to African trade empires during the middle ages. And Mrs. Cox was a workshop presenter at the Ohio Council of Teachers of English Language Arts um, annual conference. That conference theme this year was equity. In the high school, the food science students are practicing food safety and using meat thermometers. That's important. In uh, class, by making Swedish meatballs this week. Global Gourmet students are working on their Latin American culture and cuisine module, and they're making chicken fajitas. And it sounds like I need to make a visit to the high school food science students. Uh, all students are cooking individually during the pandemic, which is different than the groups they've used in the past. This creates accountability and food practices that are working so well that they're going to extend these um, individual opportunities in future classes. Students in my French work class recently received videos from seniors at our partner school in Normandy. And these French students recorded videos in French asking questions such as, what are the inequalities you see in everyday life in America? How do music and the arts convey messages? And how has the role of women changed in the United States? So in addition to recording videos in response, uh, the, my students also translated these videos into English so that uh, students in Mrs. Lickley's public speaking and Mr. Phillips's performing arts classes will respond by making their own videos to return to these French students. And we look forward to continuing this in anticipation of our real world exchanges, picking up again here. Eventually we've been on hold here for a little while, but this is a, a good alternative in the meantime. Any questions? I just wanted to um, comment on uh, how proud I am and uh, how thankful I am for our element, elementary school students who participate in the kindness challenge. I think that's so um, neat and creative and it's positive. So I hope that that's something that you will continue to have the students do. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to section C, public voice. Is there any need for public voice at this time? We do not have public, uh, public voice this time. Okay, uh, moving to section D, the executive reports. Uh, Mr. Roberts, if you would please. Yeah, good evening. Um, you want to pull up the financial report? <laughs> Just the one this time. 
So I'm kind of quiet with the revenue right now. We've got the uh, real estate coming in this month. Uh, so we'll, we'll really know where we stand with the first half uh, tax collections. Many of you have probably just paid your, your first half tax collections, so thank you. District appreciates it. Uh, so we'll know where we stand. So really on this, uh, on this month, we really only have state foundation and then a little bit of other revenue. Um, so we, we didn't receive um, our, some of our money back from the state, uh, which drives that percentage up uh, more. Uh, so we'll, we'll focus more on expenditures. Uh, we continue to trend uh, right to forecast uh, where we should be. Uh, I mean, pretty much overall, we're, we're trending exactly uh, to what the forecast. Just scroll down a little bit. We're projecting to come out 1.7 million uh, revenues over expenditures. We're trending uh, perfectly toward that. Uh, cash balance looks a little bit lower. Uh, like I said, we're going to pick up a huge influx of money uh, with the real estate tax uh, this month and then next month and then we've got one more quarter of income tax so we have some pretty significant cash payments coming in that will drive uh, that cash balance up and we'll be close to the 34.8 million. If you go to the next page we'll look at how we're performing year over year. Uh, Revenues, we, we received the cash advance last year. I didn't do cash advance this year because the settlements were going to happen within two weeks of the cash advance and interest is basically nothing at this point. So it just didn't make any sense to get the cash advance. So I just wanted to wait until the full settlement. So that's the difference on the 1.9 million. So don't panic when you see that we're down 21.8%. Uh, it's just a difference. We didn't receive the advance this year. Um, state revenue, we're actually tracking a little bit better, being only down 82,000 when we were uh, cut 360 some thousand uh, for the year. Uh, so that, that's nice to see. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, personnel service salary is trending uh, just 2.8 percent year over year more. Uh, benefits seven, and then uh, purchase services and supplies are down. Uh, purchase services, that one's kind of uh, intriguing. We know that we have the 625000 that was for uh, paying off the bus garage last year, but we're still down an additional 200 and some thousand on top of that year over year. A uh, big piece of that uh, would be substitute costs uh, that we have outsourced. Um, so I'd say that's the majority. Uh, it's going to start cutting in because charter school kids, uh, we did pick up a I think 47 more charter school kids uh, went out, and that's a direct cost to the district of $350,000 plus. Uh, so just give the board some concept on how state funding happens. We could pick up 100 students and not receive an additional penny from the state uh, for those 100 kids, but those same 100 kids could leave to go to a charter school, and we would lose $7,500 plus for every one of them that left the district. So when the, those 47 left the kids, that was a direct loss in, in expenditures and revenue for us, or a, a direct expenditure and loss of revenue from our state funding. Um, so it's kind of disheartening. I won't get into that right now, so I'll, I'll get back onto my tangent and soapbox, but it doesn't seem fair, we'll say that, uh, on how it works. Um, so that will pick back up, but it's nice to see uh, purchase services being down. Uh, I know our maintenance department is doing a, a very nice job of not outsourcing as many things, using our people to actually fix uh, those type of things. All those things add up uh, over time, uh, so we're doing a much better job of that. Uh, supplies are down year over year, I think mainly because we've been hybrid status and, and remote and, and probably haven't needed the the number of supplies being in session, I would ex I would expect that to probably pick up a little bit on the last couple months of, of coming back more and more back into, into uh, full session. Uh, but overall, um, we're, we're trending very well uh, compared to what we were last year. So uh, year over year looks good. Uh, cash investments, if you want to go to the next, we're already seeing a huge change. Um, keep going there was no activity and permanent improvement this month we have a nice long-term strategy plan if you, if you keep scrolling down all the way to uh, the next page go all the way down to the bottom 
So the last two years we've been $900,000 plus in interest. You can see we're at $341,000 and we're not projecting. Uh, we're probably going to be under $500,000. Mr. Watson would be our safe projection. So we're already starting to see the detriment of the interest rates being much lower. Now, we, we have a plan in place of investing long term, but uh, we're not going to see the $900,000 anymore here for the next, at least for the next year or two. I think uh, the federal government has a plan in place to try to get those rates uh, back quicker than they normally would. So hopefully they get something in place, whether it's change the tax rate, federal tax rate, and things like that to get that back. But uh, I guess 500000 in interest is better than uh, what we were receiving uh, a couple of years ago when we were in the, in the 200. So, so we're definitely seeing an impact of uh, COVID uh, through some interest earnings. I'm sure you're seeing that from a personal standpoint, but I think the market's starting to come back. Uh, and I think they have an incentive to get it back quicker. Um, so any questions on any of the general fund activity? Like I said, we'll know more this month going into next month on our first real estate advances to know exactly uh, where we stand. Um, my biggest my biggest concern is to see what the delinquency number is, uh, with, uh, see if for that if COVID had an impact on that or if we've still kind of maintained what our delinquency rate has been in the past. Um, so otherwise, I mean, it's going to be pretty consistent what we've been having, uh, especially with the additional values that we picked up in Franklin County, it would just come down to could people pay their, their tax bill. So that's my biggest, uh, biggest kind of worrying and uh, outlook on what the real estate taxes look like. If you want to pull up uh, insurance, we'll go over that quickly on um, just how health insurance is uh, trending. It'd be the other PDF. Uh, I'll just go down to the uh, first first page. Go, go to the next one for year over year. It's always better. Uh, so revenues, uh, the premiums had, had increased, so they're up $355,000. Uh, you can see claims uh, are almost exactly where they were last year at this point. Uh, this was right before uh, kind of COVID hit. So, uh, so it really is a true year over year. Uh, I think when we get into April, May, and June, it's going to kind of be hard to mm -hmm. tell what is truly year over year because that's when our health claims started to dip slightly. So we're probably going to pick up our claims are going to look like they're more than they were year over year in the next couple of months, but it's not going to be really the reality since uh, we had three months of COVID. Uh, but overall, costs are only up $23,000 in our in our health program. Um, so we're so we're doing very well. Um, $2.5 million uh, cash balance, uh, so this continues to be strong. Uh, I think we are trending, if you go up to the, go up to the prior page, it, it is trending to the budget amount pretty well, so I, I expect us to have somewhere in that $2.6 million at the end of the year, uh, where the percentage should be about 67%. You can see our expenditures are trending right there. So. Uh, so as long as things continue to, to trend that way, we should be uh, right there where we're budgeting. Uh, if you want to go down to dental, go to the next page. Uh, revenues, we, we kept the rates the same, so the additional $11,000 is just additional membership that we picked up. Uh, claims are down, uh, 17000 Again, we're going to probably pick that back up because the dental claims really collapsed in April, May, and June last year because uh, dental offices completely shut down. Uh, so we really didn't have any claims. Uh, we have a $259,000 cash balance. And that's kind of what I wanted to um, get some guidance from the board tonight. That's a big um, cash balance, and there's really not much we can do about it. And last year we, we collected premiums of uh, for about four months and we weren't able to go to the dental office. Uh, so what I was going to see what the board would be interested in, in awarding uh, a 
premium holiday from the dental fund back to the employees uh, over the next maybe six months. It would cost about $38,000. Um, I'm expecting it to probably come out to about 20000 a head, so I could, I could see it still being in the 220 to 230 range cash balance. It's not much money back to the employees, but it would be a nice gesture to, to give some of the money back that we collected. How much uh, is that we're able family? to use or how much would that be per employee just out of curiosity oh it's, it's not much honestly that's what i'm saying it's more of a gesture the okay. the, the premium is 84 dollars, and they've and the family pays 25 percent, so it'd be 21 dollars a month but okay. if you do six months of premium um then that would add up over over that time and it wouldn't do much damage to the to the dental plan so i at least wanted to get some thoughts uh from the board before we took it to the insurance committee uh, I think we meet with them on Wednesday to get what their thoughts might be, and then we could look at doing that here uh, soon. Yeah, I definitely support the the premium holiday for the um, employees uh, six months. Sounds like a sound plan. I think the only thing we did in the past was we did it like at the beginning, end of the year to kind of set all, offset some of the taxes, but it sounds like it's not going to hit them as hard as maybe a health insurance premium holiday would have. So I yeah. think it sounds like a good idea, and I think if our employees have been doing a good job and we see that our numbers and our claims are going down, I think we should definitely, I think giving them that benefit just kind of shows our appreciation because they work with us during those challenging times. So I think that'd be a good idea. And it's being a good steward over the funds. Yeah. You know, like you said, it's a huge surplus and you can't really do anything with it. Yeah, and dental, dental really doesn't fluctuate like health does. There's no high risk claim, so it's, it's it's not like you're going to get rid of the cash balance and all of a sudden have a $50,000 claim to try to eat up your cash balance. It's, the cash balance is going to keep growing. So okay. it's a perfect chance to give back the money that was paid last year during COVID to try to give something back. Like I said, it's more of a gesture. So you, you know. plan on six months as a... That was my initial thought was six months because it, it costs about $38,000 uh, that the employees would contribute. Uh, so it would take us down to to around the 230 mark by probably the end of the year um, into next year. Nick, do you need an actual vote or just to have us say, do it, you know, the six yeah, months Yeah, we, we would good... come back next, next okay. month because uh, I want to get uh, the insurance committee's thoughts yes. on okay. Wednesday okay. Uh, and then, then we would bring it back. Yeah, I think it, you uh, should pursue that. With that, that with I think official, we're all... With an official vote. Yeah, okay. definitely take it to the I insurance so. committee. I wanted to mention that to you before I mentioned it to the committee sure. on Wednesday. Yeah. So. Yes. I'm in favor. I think it's a good idea. I think it's, and I think it's something that our employees, especially over the summertime, would benefit from. So I'm, I think we're all on board. Okay. All right. Any questions on the uh, insurance uh, programs? No. No. Okay. That's all I have for tonight. Uh, going to get fun over the next uh, couple months with uh, forecasting and uh, waiting to see uh, what. The third round brings the month uh, to the district. Uh, the second round, uh, the CARES funding had uh, brought $54 billion to K-12 schools. Uh, this round, I think it's $130 plus billion. So I don't know exactly what that means on how it's being allocated out to the states, if it's the same way, and then if they're going to allocate it out to the schools the same way. But it's probably pretty safe to say we're going to get a, a, another big piece of funding from the third is that piece. offsetting any funds that they're already giving us at, in lieu of or is that an additional a true rollout to to local school districts It'd be a true rollout I don't know what uh, the restrictions are yet on what uh, they had in the in the Biden plan so but the prior plan was that like a a substitute or was that a real rollout last year's it was a real rollout it was a real ro yeah. okay so I mean, they have some restrictions, um, but as long as it was getting kids back to school safely, uh, it was it was you could you could pretty much spend it on anything at that point. But was getting kids back to school. The whole point was to try to get kids back to school safely and and staff back to school safely. Uh, so whatever you needed to purchase, whether it be PPE or whatever it might be, cleaning supplies, those type of things. And it was also to help offset some things uh, that may have happened during COVID uh, with loss of revenue and those type of things to, to make sure you're not holding back 
because uh, the revenue had dipped. They, they want you to try to operate as you were, keep your staff, retain your staff, and keep doing what you were doing was the purpose of the, of sure. the funds. Do you have an idea? I know it's kind of hard to predict because we're still waiting on them to release it to the state. Do you have any idea? Do you think it'll happen before the end, like midsummer, or do you think we're going to wind up seeing what that number is going to look like before? We should know probably in the next month. I mean, it just it was passed Thursday. Last Thursday. It was it last Thursday night, late? Uh, so we should know probably in the next week or two. I would, I would think they, the, at least some estimates. You think they'll have more restrictions on the usage of that money, or? Probably not. Uh, judging by what Biden was introducing, I think he was looking for less restriction. Uh, I know Senate kicked back a few things, but I don't know exactly what they kicked back on him on this. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to be more restrictions than what the, the first was. Good enough. So. We have a plan, so once we get it and we know, we'll put a plan together uh, and let the board know. Uh, I, th I think we can do some good things with the money for sure. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Well, okay, moving to Section 2, Superintendent's Report. Mr. Sotler, if you would. Well, thank you, Mr. Yonati. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our viewers. Just have a few reminders and updates uh, this evening. Uh, two reminders. One, just letting everyone know, and I'm sure most people know that, that our school-based plan to extend to four days starts Monday, March 22nd. That's a week from today. And we'll stay four days through the end of April. Those Wednesdays will be used as remote learning days. And then starting May 3rd, we'll go to five days a week until the end of the school year. It's almost like we're um, starting over again, March 22nd. You know, people are excited, they're nervous, but I think for the most part, um, we're all ready to get our kids back to a full uh, week here shortly, uh, and it will be here within a month. We're going to continue to make sure that, you know, kids are working, wearing masks. Uh, everyone's wearing a mask. That is a state mandate. If people want to wear a double mask, if they want to wear a face shield with the mask, that is totally up to them. We're going to do our best to social distance of three feet. Six is max, you know, is, is, is the best. We're going to try our best at three feet. Um, schools weren't designed, as I said before, for social distancing, but we're going to do our very best to make sure we at least have three feet of social distancing. And we're continuing with hand washing and sanitizing our, our cleaning protocols. And if there are issues that come up, we're continuing to work with our staff, the building principals. We'll work with their building leadership teams. I will work with the uh, CWEA leadership team, sit down and try to come up with solutions to any issues or, or concerns that come up. But we're excited to get back to four days a week and then five days a week here in May. So March 22nd, we start. Uh, spring break, just so, just a reminder, week of March 29th through April 2nd. So that's the uh, two weeks from now. And then we'll go strong the rest of the school year. A couple of positive updates we have, and this is mostly for the high school. Question has come up about prom. And yes, we are gonna have a prom this year. And that's very exciting. Uh, we have two options for the prom this year. Um, one is to have it at the Weston on April 16th. That was the original date that we scheduled last year. And unfortunately, the Weston could only, because of COVID, even though it's opened up, they could only go to their capacity of about 350 kids, which means we can't have an all-inclusive prom because most of the time we have close to 500 or more kids at the prom. And so what their option number one would be to have it on April 16th at the West End, and we would have two groups. The first group, juniors, would come in from 6.30 to 8.30, and then the uh, second group, seniors, would come in from 9 to 11. We'll have a 30-minute break to kind of get kids out. Um, and so if you're a junior that's dating a senior or a senior that's dating a junior, you can only go one to the other, can't go to both. But however, that's option number one. Option number two is to have an all-inclusive at the high school on May 14th. And so everyone would be invited and we'll do it in the high school with the auxiliary where the new supplemental gym, the cafeteria, we'll, you know, we would decorate it, do everything that we would normally do for a prom. Now we're letting the high school kids choose from this. A, a survey went out and so they're gonna take option A, option two, or option one, option two, whatever it is, we're gonna go go with it, but we're gonna have a prom this year. So that's good. I'm excited about that. And then the second one is with graduation. We're gonna have a traditional ceremony this year, and it will take place on May 29th at 9 a.m. in the morning. Right now, it looks like we're at World Harvest, so that's a good thing. And un unfortunately, with capacity, it's like 30%, which means we'll have five tickets per student. 
uh, for, um, for family members. Now, all information is subject to change due to the governor's orders or mandates. That can get more restrictive. That could loosen up. We don't know yet, but right now, it'll be five tickets per student. Um, Wednesday, it'll be uh, Saturday, May 29th at, at 9 a.m. If for some reason, World Harvest doesn't come through, which I don't think it will, I'm pretty set on that. However, we do have a backup plan and we'll have it at the high school football stadium and we'll have it outside and if we'll start at 9 a.m. and if it's bad weather, we'll, we'll push it back two hours until we can get graduation in. But we are gonna have a traditional graduation ceremony this year, one way, shape or, or form, but I'm pretty positive it will be at uh, World Harvest like we've had in the past. So trying to do our best to get back to a normal end to the school year for everyone and I think that's best for all of us moving forward. As always, I will continue to track the numbers I'll look at them um, weekly and daily, weekly. And I'm gonna look at our numbers here in Canal Winchester Local School District. And I'll see how the numbers are going with positive cases, quarantine cases. And if, and if we have to make a shift for some reason from one building or, or for multiple buildings or for the district, then we'll do that just like I did back in uh, before uh, winter break. But we'll continue to monitor those numbers and uh, just excited to get our kids back to a four-day week and then to a five-day week in May. And as always, make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. Any questions? I do, Mr. Sattler. Um, I know that uh, March 12th was the deadline for families mm -hmm. who wanted to switch their children from the hybrid to koala. Yes. Do you have any numbers yes. to show how many families did that? I do. We had one, one student at Indian Trail, two at Winchester Trail, five at the middle school, and around 25 at the high school. So not a whole lot. Was that um, what you expected? Like, um, I didn't know what to expect because a few district, they had probably the same numbers we had, and a couple had just a, a lot of kids go from um, school-based to the koala or, or their online learning mm -hmm. program. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but uh, these numbers don't surprise me. Okay. So at all so very few kids that went from school based to koala but thank you for asking okay thank you well it would surprise me if those 25 from the high school weren't all seniors <laughs> <laughs> could be could be know. who knows <laughs> so i don't have that um if they're freshmen sophomore juniors seniors but who knows i like the uh the prom situation uh, i'm glad uh kirk and everyone got together to have the kids actually have a say in what they're they're doing. I know they haven't had much say in the last 12 months and uh, yes, there's guidelines, but really put it in the hands of the students to say, what do you want to do? It's up to you. It's your year. You decide. So I'm glad that we have that choice for the students. So now they are going to have to wear face mask. I mean, there's nothing we can do sure. about that. Yeah. But yeah, it was good. I mean, he worked with his prom committee with the teachers and then out to the students. So very thankful for Mr. Henderson and the high school staff. So yeah, it's good. It's good. Any other questions, comments? Well, thank you very much. That would be a great thing for our kids. Thank you, Mr. Sattler. <clears throat> District reports, um, are there any questions or comments about those? I've already asked my questions. You are offline just for you, John. Okay, then that would be moving us into the consent agenda. Do we need a motion for that? Mm -hmm. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All right, thank you very much. Um, we will start off with under the consent agenda for number one, the minutes from the February 8th board meeting and the March 3rd special meeting. Number two, um, certified personnel. We do have a retirement. Um, Deb Keeby, middle school teacher, will be retiring effective November 1st. And we just wanna thank her for her years of service in the district. She will be finishing up her 21st year in the district and she has over 35 years in the state. So best of luck to her. She'll remain with us for the start of the school year um, until obviously August and September and October. Um, but she'll retire November 1st. We also have a couple resignations and um, teacher recommendations. We are approving Zach Olson. 
And this is a little unique with us coming back to school. Um, Zach will actually serve in the ABIP role. Um, however, when we were talking with him and interviewing him, he has some great experience and will will is going to start with us here come April 5th. And he will work with our credit recovery students. So we're really coming up with a plan to ensure that our students at the high school will be able to get credit prior to even summer school. So we're going to you know, push through and um, Zach's gonna help us in that area. Great. And we probably will use some of the second CARES funds for this uh, to help with the credit recovery, just to, just to let you know. We'll probably carry that into next year. Uh, may not be with this individual, but uh, we're probably gonna need it next year and we'll probably use that those funds again to help make sure kids are on track and on pace to, to graduate uh, timely. Yes, so. with the uncertainty, that's a good thing. Yes. Um, and then also you'll, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just wanted to point that out. Yep, thank you. And then also we have, um, we will be hiring Jake Keener as an intervention specialist at the middle school, and that will be for the 21-22 school year. And last but certainly not least, um, we will be hiring Indiana Summers as the insurance committee chair. Um, if you recall, at the beginning of the year, we didn't hire in a lot of our stipend positions just based off of what had been happening this year and not knowing about the positions and what we would need. And Deanna had been acting as the insurance committee chair all year. Um, so we just wanted to um, approve her in that position. And moving on to number three for classified personnel, we do have a couple different resignations and an extended unpaid leave for a medical leave. And then we are also um, asking you to approve um, Anthony Kuhn as the HVAC technician. And again, that position will start, and this date is an incorrect date. It says April 1st, but he will start with us on March 29th. And as Mr. Robert shared um, when we were looking at the treasurer's report, we really feel like this position is going to help us a lot with those purchase services. You've already seen it go down and just the skill level that he'll bring um, to the district. And then last in the classified um, section, we have some, some substitute classified staff. Number four, moving on to supplemental personnel. Um, at the beginning there, you're going to see that there's several supplemental adjustments and recensions. Um, those were due to incorrect information. We just had to adjust those. Um, we do have a resignation. And then the first batch there, we are asking you to approve um, academic supplementals for this year, Chad McGee and Todd Phillips. And both of those are for the vocal and then the instrumental um, pieces of the musical. We are going to have a musical this spring um, okay. to be determined if that output is in person or if that is something that we stream online or in small groups. Um, but those two will be serving in those positions. And then moving into athletic supplementals, we have some coaches that we're approving for the spring and then several volunteer coaches. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. Any questions or comments from the board? That being said, Mr. Roberts, if you'd please call the roll. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Mm. Okay. Continuing on to Section G, the action items. Uh, the first one would be the TransFinder contract software and licensing. Any so move. Questions? So move. Mr. Kruger. Second. Mr. Metzler. Okay, this is for the bus garage. Basically, it's a new routing system. Um, uh, it's replaced the old one that we currently have. It, it, from my understanding, it matches up better with the systems we already have in place. And uh, and so the individual that is going to be working on this has used it in, in another uh, uh, district that the uh, person was in. Uh, so it's basically going with the new software license for our bus routing. Is this the same sort of thing as VersaTrans? Yes. It's yeah, gonna this is going to replace VersaTrans. So basically, it's replacing our new uh, VersaTrans with the new software system. This for is the a one-year. So this is just a one-year contract or agreement, I should say. Well, uh, it's a uh, one-year and couple months. It's a uh, prorated to get through. Uh, 
because we're going to get it in here now and get us through June 30th, 22. Okay. So correct. Uh, we're going to hold on to, um, we've already paid for Versa Trans, so there'll be some several overlap. months of overlap to make sure everything runs smoothly for the beginning of school year. So. If this works, if this runs smoothly, I'm guess I'm assuming events transitioning to the system would be the long term goal. Yeah, yeah, that this is the long term goal. Yeah, yeah. The training will probably be done by June first or so once they get all the information over to the new software. Okay. Yeah. Transferring data is not the easiest thing, so you want to make sure you have both systems in place until we're 100 percent sure things are good. Okay. Excellent. And this is for routing and students, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. That is correct. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Roberts, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Krueger? Yes. Mr. Matchler? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Unani? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Uh, second uh, item on the list would be the accept the tax amounts and raise for the fiscal year 2022. Any motion, please? So moved. Ms. Talley? I'll we'll second. Is that Mr. Kruger? Mm -hmm. uh, this looks almost exactly like uh, the one we approved last month. Uh, last month was amended uh, tax rates for fiscal 21. This is tax rates for fiscal 2022. Uh, the numbers are almost exactly the same because they really pulled the numbers from uh, the same place. Just to recap. It shows the full tax rate. Uh, it's not the effective rate that is actually uh, issued on the tax bills. It's the, it's the voted rate that could be uh, issued if uh, values decreased. It had to decrease very drastically. Uh, but our, our values are appreciating, so we shouldn't have that problem. But at least uh, you see the full tax rate, five mills on the inside mills. It's been five probably since 1970 three or four, uh, we want to scroll down a little bit. They just kind of estimate what the, the taxes bring in. Uh, so the board's essentially approving uh, the tax rate number, that, that's the number that could be levied. Uh, that's the estimate of revenue uh, derived from the, from the millage. And this sets up the tax budget uh, that we'll do uh, later in the year. So any questions on, on the rates and we just have to certify them to the uh, budget commission and they approve them. Okay. Any questions from the board, please? No. That being said, Mr. Roberts, if you would please. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. <clears throat> Item number three would be the general temperature control removal and reinstallation proposal. And I need a motion to approve this for discussion. So moved. Ms. Second. Speller and Ms. Talley. So basically we... Oops. So the high school has a roof issue that we um, just... Well, not just noticed it, but over the last couple of months, we figured out in order to replace that roof, we have to remove the existing HVAC system that that's there and then reinstall it back in. And so we're going to use general temp uh, to do that for us. That's the only way for us to get up and uh, do the uh, fix with the roofing. And I'm not even sure what, what part of the roof it is at the high school right now. I, I well, can't remember. Gym, it was the $1.2 million uh, that yeah. we approved several months back. Uh, so if you look at this, it's, it's pretty pretty extensive. They're going to come in with a crane to remove both units, take both units down, do the roof, and then put both units back and have to hook up all the piping and all the refrigerant and, and everything. So. And that was that gentleman who came in. It was at, was that the 76 like addition yes, to the correct. building mm -hmm. where it was like flat and it was just it was a lot going on. A lot going there. on there. Yes. Yeah. Pretty big project. We knew that it was. We knew that we were going to have to do that. We just didn't know what uh, we, we he bid it out and got a couple quotes and this was the best. Okay, so the question uh, I think for would be the, the same units are going to go back in place. Yes, correct. Are those units still in good working order, I would imagine? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. If, if not, then that would have been part of the high school project to, to replace those. Good enough. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay, Mr. Roberts, if you would. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Mr. Metzler? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. 
Motion passes 5-0. And I believe at this point we're going to have a discussion item. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Oh. I don't believe we have any public voice. Oh, so that would be done? Yeah, let's do public. Okay, do so. Public voice and then we'll have a discussion. Okay, public uh, comments. Uh, this would be uh, from RED. No public, yep, so we have no one from a public voice, so we can move on to the discussion. Okay. Ready for discussion? Mr. Durbin? Could you come on up and talk about your your plan for athletics? Let's let's uh, let's start with the playing facility. That's all inclusive for all. Darby's old boyfriend. Yep. Is he teaching here now? Yeah, public relations. He does. He took, I don't remember. Uh, he took over for uh, Josh Dress. Oh, okay. He's a social studies teacher. Now. But he's kind of a yeah. We can hear you. So he's coaching uh, overview soccer as well. Good evening, I'm Pat Durbin, the Canal Winchester High School Athletic Director, and I want to give, take an opportunity to show the board, show those that we've, something that we've had in works uh, for probably about two years now, but now's the time that we wanted to try to roll it out and get support behind it. It's, it's massive improvements to the athletic training facility. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, on the left-hand side here, you'll see the main training facility area and behind it used to be the wrestling room, but because of the new supplemental gym, we were able to move the wrestling mats over to the auxiliary gym to give them a home, which opened up the back area. So a couple of years ago, the former coach Josh Stratton, a couple of members of the community, we started developing the idea of a brand new athletic training facility to where it sits today. The, the back area, we are looking to, the vision would be to turf that back area uh, for speed and agility purposes. And the front room, will, which is where we'll, our athletic equipment will be. Uh, working, been working with Corey Coe, who's very fitness oriented, and our, our new football coach, Jake Keener. We've been getting quotes from the, uh, it's an athletic company in Granville, Ohio. We actually, the three of us went there last week and toured the facility about two weeks ago. We wanted to make sure that the equipment was not football centric, but it can be used across all 17 athletic programs. I've also been t talking with the high school as far as gym class. The goal is to not make this just an athletic training facility, but to be used for uh, academic purposes. Our, our, our gym classes would be able to utilize it. Uh, performing arts, if they wanted to use it, would be able to utilize it. Our staff at the high school, uh, staff members at the high school, if they want an area to, to work out as well or work on speed and agility, whatever the case may be, this isn't just the athletic training facility, but the Canal Winchester training facility, home to our high school and those members of the high school, to include all of our staff members. Uh, and again, will be part of our education in terms of, of gym classes there as well. That back area will also uh, be used for soccer for foot sole. Just many different opportunities that, that the back area provides us. So that portion would be turfed. The left side would be a, basically you know, a, a hard uh, floor or hard soft floor, if you will, for the weights. They would be a combination. Right now what you see is just all like hard bench weights that would be used. There's also equipment tied into the quote that's not necessarily represented in that picture, but that wouldn't be just, again, for, for lifting heavy weights. It would be ropes and that all people of all, you know, physical, if you're just starting out versus those that are really, you know, at another, at another level. Uh, if you go to the next, here's another layout of what it could potentially look like, lined or not lined in the top, uh, right hand corner you can kind of see the breakout of the cost I think that's already been sent to to Mr. Roberts and Mr. Sottler uh, if you go to the next slide this was 
you know, I, I kind of started with the end in mind. You know, a year and a half ago, we thought, okay, how about middle of June of 2021? We obviously didn't plan on COVID when this initially started. But if we were, and again, it's a point of which to deviate from, but again, a year and a half ago, our vision was June 15th of 2021. We're actually closing in on that. Back planning it with the company on March 18th, we would start. But it would depend, be dependent, obviously, of, of funding and so forth and, and, and those items being approved. But this takes us from when funding is approved, it would basically take about three months from, from beginning to end to make it an open house uh, on 15 June. That's what it would look like if, if, we got, if we received the funding for it now. That's really, in a nutshell, what the proposal is, what the future looks like, and how it will be utilized. And Mr. Sotler, if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Pat, I, th I think what I'm hearing is this could be a student and staff and athlete wellness as well as a training facility? That's exactly correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Which I think is very positive for everybody involved. Yes. Again, we didn't want to, f as the athletic director, I just didn't want to focus on the athletic piece of this because I think that's much larger than that. So you could do dance and marching band or something like that? Whatever. We are, we, are, that we are only limited to what our ideas are for that back area. That's absolutely correct. Okay. So, Pat, is that those dimensions, we're not building any walls. That's the way it's set up today. No, the, the structure, it might need some improvements on the ground and so forth, but the structure's in place. We don't need to build or really add anything. We're working within the structure that already exists. And this came available by relocating the wrestling team into the aux gym with the softball and the baseball, giving them their own facility, which left this vacant for this. Absolutely meeting. correct. And again, it, with our effort to be collaborative, Mr. Sotler always talk, talks about collaboration. By moving that wrestling facility over to the aux gym, moving our rec program that used to be at the aux gym that is now in the supplemental gym in the main area. So... The, the, the rec has also benefited from this because they went from using an auxiliary gym that was a little, you know, a little dated to a brand new supplemental gym. So they're getting even rec as we continue to partner with them is benefiting from this, this very large plan that we have going right now. So just to give the board a little bit of feedback, he was, he was obviously trying to work with the boosters to come up with this and given a plan. Um, I think the booster thing and kind of falling through a little bit with the leadership um, and COVID COVID they're in COVID. So it was not brought to us to do, but then as I started looking at it for the benefit of the district and I basically said, as long as it's not just for one sport, it's for all sports, it's for all uh, staff to have to almost be an additional wellness piece and those things. And I think we could fit it into the athletic plan. Uh, we met with the uh, finance committee at five tonight for two hours, kind of went over the overall athletic plan. Uh, I think we all know that the, the turf and the track uh, is coming. Uh, and uh, some of this big piece of this is going to be funded uh, through the dollars remaining from the high school renovation project. So the district had moved seven and a half million dollars over to fund that project. We came in under budget. We're going to have roughly seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars left of that three hundred and twenty thousand dollars plus of it is interest that we earned on that money so i thought it would be a good opportunity to really attack some of these facility things and have more less limited or have less impact to our permanent improvement fund than we were going to have uh, i think we're going to get a plan together once we get all the quotes i mean you're looking at the turf the track uh, the press box uh, and, and different things like that, but there's an overall plan to where the PI was going to take a pretty big hit, and now it's going to take a less hit with coming up with this plan. Uh, we've got some other uh, things in the plans for non-athletic things too uh, that I think uh, once we get some idea of the funding and CARES, uh, we'll roll, roll that out. But I think overall, as long as it's a facility that's all sports, and open to the staff, I think it could be beneficial. Uh, and we're using funds that are uh, that were left there at, for the high school project. Uh, so it's a, it's a good use uh, of those dollars, I think. Well, we were able to create money out of nothing. I mean, that interest 
Correct. from that, just creating free money, I mean, to use for projects like this. I mean, that's... Like I told them, it was already money set aside that we anticipated using, uh, so it's, 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 a good, it's a good use uh, for the facilities, I know. Um, athletic facilities and different facilities always maybe get a bad rap, but at the same time, it's still the board and district's responsibility to upkeep and keep things uh, ready uh, and to keep kids healthy uh, if an athletic facility really helps to do that. And it, it and helps and my staff too. I'm sorry, Mr. Durbin, no, but please. I really, one thing I liked about this, and you mentioned this a few times, was, and I know sometimes when we see these big projects, people think it's focused on football, but it sounds to me from what I'm seeing and sort of your vision that a lot of our female athletes and our other students are going to benefit from this as well. 100%. Because I know sometimes 100%. that's kind of what happens is they kind of feel like, you know, this is centered on football and it sounds to me like we got a long term. No, 100%. Corey Coe has worked with many, you know, many of the programs. Josh Stratton did as well. And, and Jake Keener is coming in here, our football coach. Again, he was very instrumental, honestly, at breaking down all of the equipment to ensure that it was centric for all 17 athletic programs. Our football coach was a three-sporter in high school. He wrestled, he played football, he was track. He's the only, only coach, or only person in Fairfield County history, five-time consecutive All-Ohio. He was an All-Ohio wrestling junior year track and then football wrestling track, five consecutive. So he truly understands, they all understand the value of multi-sport athletes. So yeah, I'm extremely excited about the usage of this with all of our programs to include our performing arts. So as a board, if we decide to move forward with this, um, just let me get a little, I'm gonna wrap my mind around the time frame. So you're talking about- Can you go back? So when would you need a commitment from us as a board to be able to take that next step, I guess? Well, I, obviously, I'd love a commitment tonight, you know, but that would be to make, that would be to meet that June 15th deadline. It, it, it all is dependent upon, you know, it starts there, and it's hard to see with the yellow, but it starts there with the board approval. Once we get board approval, I start rolling forward with logos, exactly what it's going to look like. You know, we're going to get some money back on the equipment, so the investment – probably could even be a little smaller because we'll you know they got to come out and do an estimate so there's there's a lot of everything is in place to make it happen we just need the commitment to allow us to let it happen so it's about a three-month process and one thing we discussed in the financial meeting was that we're looking at not only here at the high school but other things at the middle school and some academics non-sports related activities as part of this whole project planning, just so that everybody, it's not just focused on, now I'm a big big football weight room guy, but I, I think that everything should be represented and we're looking at that. I just wanna make well, sure. Well, I'd like to add, just a reminder, I agree again that it's not, you know, we have our first eSports season that we kicked off two weeks ago, that we've included a new set of student athletes so I, I certainly believe Canal Winchester is, is setting the stage of creating that culture of inclusion for sure. And we Thank you. For sure. We're two uh, esports is two and zero, oh, man. We're rolling. <laughs> I also think the one thing that we hear a lot about the athletics and the staff, but uh, when we talk with our students and our staff about what pathways could we introduce, and if you look at just across the board the personal um, physical conditioning or the personal trainer that kids could go through and get their personal training license shortly after high school, and this could be something that maybe we could really tie into that and get the interest of those kiddos, something that they can have. I mean, especially when you talk health and wellness, um, I think we could definitely tie it into the academics, without a doubt. Especially with, you know, and I, if I can caveat on what Ms. Hunt said, with, the, with our students returning to school, they've had a lot of emotional, you know, there, there's a lot of things that have occurred once they get back into school. This provides another, you know, another outlet for them to, to help with that. So, again, a lot, of, a lot of upside to this. Also, Pat, I know that you have a vision um, of setting up Canal Winchester like a D2 uh, university. Correct. And, and to have the... Uh, um, the alumni center on the track, you know, have that separate building there. This would just really start to build that that foundation of that program. I mean, I don't know any schools that have this kind of available for staff and students 
Um, yes. So it's just a, it, a good starter for that. To that, that is true. As I talk to the booster club members, talk to the members of the community, I just think we need to stop thinking, like, I don't want to be like other high schools. I want to be like a Division II, so we set the standard, and everybody's looking at us going, this is the way we want to be, like Canal Winchester. So we're trying to think beyond what the best high school looks like and start looking at what a good Division II college looks like, and then people will start emulating us rather than us emulating everybody else. Anything that impacts health and wellness for our kids, I'm all for. And so let me ask the board this. Where do we go from here in this regard? I, I like the proposal. I, I think it's something that we need to, I think it's a good investment for our district. I think our kids benefit. So, you know, I don't know if we have to formally vote on it or if Mr. Durbin just needs to have an understanding that we're supportive of it. But I can tell you from my personal opinion, I would be generally supportive of this plan. I think it's Thank you, sir. Well, Thank you. I can bring it back next month. But yeah. you give me the authority to open up a purchase order to provide to the company uh, to start the ball and start ordering the equipment uh, then we can officially approve it um, next month I think I think that's fine okay, I think so with a purchase order though so I, I believe we need a motion advance. yes we need a motion from the board for that correct no if you want a no. motion you can but I, I would yeah, rather I would, I would rather have it added month. to the agenda not okay. on be it, I'd rather it be formally on the agenda okay. next Good month enough. I can issue a PO it doesn't I think you have the board support Nick to move forward with your process and we can officially approve it next month okay. so, so. We'll, we'll get a po to the to the vendor and probably good to talk about the cost if we're going to start fine. doing that you got to mention the cost so people are understanding what this is so go ahead yeah the, if you can go back it's a little harder to see the total cost is approximately one hundred seventy three thousand dollars that does not include a logo it would it would not include the pc and that is without the lines on the field. So the equipment cost you can see is roughly $130,500. The turf is $28,000. And then the, uh, the, uh, without the lines is $3,500. So there's additional cost. If we went with the lines on the turf, if we went with the logo, which I personally think the logo should be part of it, but that's my personal feelings, we're looking at about $182,500 without the trade-in of the equipment back. That could be anywhere from five grand to 15 grand, depending upon how good it is, how, you know, how, how good a shape it is. So that could, that could come off the cost too, but. But how many pieces of equipment is the uh, 100? A lot. I don't That's what I'm saying, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot, it's a lot of equipment. They're all, I mean, it's, it's all. It's all there. Like 12 pieces of, each, of, the, of the weight room equipment, bands. I mean, I, that might, that's Corey and Jake making it all happen. Yeah, there. my point was it's, it's, it's a substantial amount. Oh, of yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. Yes. And that's why it's important. We probably wait till next month to officially prove on it so we could bring it to you and show you this is everything that we're getting. But and then I would like them to actually, so the board could see it, actual with our logo, with those type of things. Does it cost extra for a CW rather than a PC? Well, that was just an example of one would look like. Just check. Just check. <laughs> it's a wrong color red, too. Right. The turf will probably be a gray color with, our, with this logo on it if that's, if that's the way we decided to go. And, and as we discussed, Mr. Roberts, if you could put together kind of that long-term yes. yeah, plan see. so we can discuss that in the future. I'll talk to him tonight about the other things that we discussed and get quotes and, and put in. A, put and a, again, we're not, this isn't something that we just, this has been in the, part of this quote was we were able to keep some costs down because we're going to have local community members part of getting everything out and preparing it to come in, which if we didn't and they did it all would be an additional cost. So we certainly look for ways that the community is going to get involved and help to keep these costs down for our kids. And I think what's important for everyone to, um, to understand that these facilities are our facilities. And whether it's academic, athletics, performing arts, doesn't matter. It is our responsibility to make sure that we take care of them. And every so often, we, we're going to have to update them. And that costs money. And this is an opportunity that we have right now. We've been planning on this for a couple years. This is going to benefit a lot of people from our student, not only our, our student athletes, but hopefully maybe a curriculum at, at the high school for the academics. 
staff. Now, timing is going to be an issue. It's not going to be open like Planet Fitness 24-7. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to have times when people will be in there. But truly, this will benefit all people. And the, you know, the, the uh, good part about it, we're, we're using interest money from the project that was meant for the high school. We could not do anything, use any of the o OFCC money for the high school project uh, for athletics. So that's not allowable with the OFCC. So this is an opportunity to take care of, of, of facilities that truly are in need of updating right now. And it's just something that, you know, every, these, are our, these are our buildings and it's up to us to take care of them. I think it's important to understand we're taking, I mean, it seems like almost half of it is just the interest that we that occurred off of the projects that yep. we had. So this is in a way, it was like a one-time infusion cash that came from we had we benefited from that so I, I think this is a good long-term investment and it's something that's not just a short term it's going to be around for a long time for our kids and the next group of students that come through here to benefit from so i think it's a good long-term investment for the district yeah well, well most people they, they see people playing on friday nights and tuesday nights and thursday nights but what they don't see is the training that goes in before then that keeps kids from having injuries and and having high risks of knee injuries and and head trauma and things like that. This is where it all starts to make sure every kid that's playing sports is strong enough to sustain and, and not be injury prone. Uh, I guarantee if you called Ohio State and asked them the most important position in their organization, it would be their strength and conditioning coach at the athletic facility. Yeah, make, making, making sure, sure those kids are ready to compete when, when it's time for them to compete. Well, I would like to thank the Board of Education for your support, along with our leadership. I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you tonight. Thank you. And Mr. Durbin, you'll, you'll come back with a, a complete plan for yes, sir. us, and including the amount for the uh, trade-in. I'll have it all laid out. Okay. Thank you, sir. Is the turf going to be like what's on the football field? It's going to be not similar, but it's going to be an, it's going to be an upgraded turf. It's going to be similar, because the, the turf is going to, that's a whole other presentation for another time, right? Correct. But yeah, I'll see. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. So I believe we are moving on to section I. Is there any need for executive session? Yes. Okay. And that should be on there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I need a motion to move to executive session, if you would. So move. Mr. Butler. Second. Mr. Kruger. Okay, the motion is to enter executive session for the purpose of preparing for, conducting, or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of, of their employment. And again, we had Mr. Kruger and Mr. Butler, Mr. Mr. Kruger. And this is discussion only, no action will be taken. Sorry. This is discussion only, no action will be taken outside of executive session. So we will reconvene. Once executive session is over, we will reconvene and close out. Okay, so we need a what time. Would you like to enter? 820? It is 815. Eight, uh, yep. Eight, five 820 would be fine. Roberts, you would please. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Kruger? Yes. Mr. Batchelor? Yes. Mrs. Talley? Yes. Mr. Unati? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. And we'll move to...